our, our project started about five years ago. When I was reading an article, and I heard about this thing called Beowulf Computers, which NASA aims, uh, which does huge simula simulations of weather systems and stuff, didn't have enough computing power. So the researchers there decided to see if they could build a really large computing infrastructure just from rare old PCs. So reading this, I was saying, you know, it sounds pretty cool. It sounds, it sounds like it's easy. So but just at that time, the development office at Stern was looking for ideas for grant money to go to Citigroup with. Oh, okay. And so I said, hey, <laughs> here's one. And Citigroup bought us our first little cluster. And, uh, and we had a little network, uh, a dedicated network for that cluster. And we started running jobs. Um, the only other thing that you need is is a system to schedule the jobs and figure out what what machine is available for this job to run on. We're also, uh, I mean, Stern is, is an odd business school because it is very large. Uh, it, it has an undergraduate program, so we have, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, we are one of the few business schools that has the statistics department in the business school instead of in arts and science. So our statisticians are big, heavy compute users. So that's another reason why we have always been one of the top five or ten computer users around business schools. So it's usually PhD students and junior faculty that do the most of the computing. Senior faculty will have PhD students do their computing for them. So, this, that's, so it's not that, in many cases, it's PhD students working on their own research for dissertations and stuff. But in, in many other cases, it's PhD students working with a faculty member on joint research. And when I find someone who's running a really long-running job, I send them an email oh, okay. and say, how would you like to run that 20 times faster? And of course, the answer is usually, you know, where's your office? Uh, and so I sort of one at a time started to drag PhD students out of the machine. And they got on there, and all of a sudden their stuff was running 12 times faster, at least, and probably the machines were much faster than our time sharing machine was. So they immediately were running like 20 times faster. And they're like, wow. So it was a success. And then there's the other side, which is what happens if we want to start charging for grid computing and for shipping these jobs off? And so I just send the job off. I don't care where it goes. All I, all, you know, I, I, I have this job. Uh, I, I send it out and basically auction and say, you know, okay, who's the lowest bid to do this job? Here are the parameters of the job. Uh, you will find you got it, and I don't even know who you are. I don't care where you are. All I know is I'm giving you 5.95 for this job because oh, okay. you have some excess cycles and you're hungry. Harvesting their excess computer cycles on desktop machines at night, oh. and you and you'll find out on Wall Street that they're doing that. I mean, they're doing these huge value at risk simulations of simulating their, their you know their portfolio over with all sorts of different risk parameters and stuff, and they need a massive amount of computation. There, there was a grid computing effort, hackers, to, to, to break the latest cryptography thing. They broke it in, I think, in 20 days. They used 10,000 computers around the world to, to break some security scheme to show that just, you know, not, not to hack it, but to break, to say, hey, we can break this. <laughs> the other thing is that they're now, they're what we call metagrids. They're grids of grids, so that you can now and we haven't tried to do this, but we've, we've looked at it. And another student do a project on this is, you know, what if I think I have a researcher who's running on my grid, and they need more resources? Well, you can tie these grids together, um, and this research as the technically it's pretty easy to just ship my job, encapsulate everything that he needs to run or she needs to run, and send it off to a Max, our, our supercomputer at the university, or maybe to IBM or Sun or some other cluster somewhere to run it because it needs specialized resources. We've increased the computing capacity by a factor of about 10 in the last two or three years. The next major thing we're going to attack is a clustered, what we call a clustered file system. Right now, each one of these computers that you can run jobs on uh, generally has its own disk space. There's some shared space, but it's, it's inefficient to get to it. Um, but a clustered file system uh, will allow us to have very fast access to a large amount of disk um, from any one of the machines 
in, in our cluster. By the end of next week, we'll have 24, at least uh, probably 30 terabytes of disk. Um, we have, um, in our research computing environment, more processing power and more disk space than Wharton has at the Wharton Research Data Systems in place. And Wharton supports 125 business schools around the country. Wow. So Stern alone is bigger than all the computing from all those other guys. 